Good morning to you all, and thank you for joining in on this agribusiness media webinar where we are discussing business of uh, production. My name is Rollings, your host, and I am with Agribusiness uh, Media. So today we are here to dig deep into the soil of knowledge and unearth the secrets of potato uh, farming. We are broadcasting live on the Agribusiness Media Facebook page and sharing this wealth of information far and wide. Our panel of experts today includes Abraham Makadzange. He is from Matapiri Seed, and he will shed more light on the seed varieties and uh, selection. We also have uh, Elizabeth joining us from NutriMaster, and she will delve into the heart of soil health. And we have Rudo Chinoi from Polakem, and he will guide us through the maze of crop protection. So uh, we do have the right experts to guide us through uh, our today's uh, presentations. And remember, your questions are the seeds of understanding. And uh, uh, this, uh, let's try farmers to make it as interactive as possible. We want to hear from you, our esteemed farmers. So your questions, comments, experiences are the lifeblood for this uh, discussion. So don't hesitate to share your experiences are with us. And uh, we will have a question and answer session right after all the presentations. So please keep those questions and comments ready. And you can send uh, via the chat here on Zoom or you can comment uh, if you're watching us live on the Agribusiness Media uh, Facebook page. So uh, let's kick things off with Abraham from Matapiri Seeds. Uh, Abraham, good morning once again. The stage is yours. Uh, my name? as you heard from Mr. Rowling, is Abraham Makadzange. I am a research agronomist with Matapiri Seed Cells. Today, I'm going to talk about seed potato varieties. But interestingly enough, I'm going to talk about those varieties that are offered by Matapiri Seed Cells. As a brief uh, background to our company, our company started in 2010 and we registered our first variety by the name of Montiao in 2012. Then from 2012 to date, we have grown from strength to strength and we have managed to register 12 more varieties with Seed Services Institute. That's the Minister of Agriculture, Government, I'm uh, responsible for uh, the management of uh, seed in this uh, country. Uh, let us move on to the first uh, slide, uh, Mr. Rowling, okay? The gentlemen, in the potato world, we do have what we call sector crops. A potato is not just a potato. So as for multiple seed cells, Currently, we are working on three of the five sector groups. But let me introduce to you the five different sector groups that we have in the potato industry, depending on end use. It is important to note that all sector groups are further divided into maturity groups, depending on the period of time from emergence to maturity, namely, we got what we call long growers. These potato varieties take 100 to 120 days after emergence to maturity. Take note after emergence, not at planting or after planting, at after emergence. Then we do have what we call medium growers. They take 90 to 110 days after emergence. Then we do have again what we call the short growers. They take 80 to 100 days to mature after emergence. Okay, let us move on to the sector groups we have. We do have the fresh market, which is uh, very popular with most housewives because of their flexible culinary, what we call uh, cooking properties. We do have the salad sector group. It's not uh, very common uh, in uh, regions like ours, but we're mostly in uh, European countries that do have 
more sophisticated uh, markets. Then we have the French fries varieties, which are popular with the, what we call the quick service restaurants. For example, we do have our own KFCs here, then there's the McDonald's, etc. Then we do have our crisping sector group, which is popular with the processing industry. Here in Zimbabwe, we have our own canes, but in South Africa, there's Simba, there's Lace, there's also Doritos. And finally, the uh, our last uh, sector group, one we refer to as a uh, peeled, it's mostly popular in European countries. Next slide, please. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you to the varieties we have is matapiri seed cells that fall under the fresh market sector group. But I am going to start off with the long growers because under the fresh market sector group, we do have the long growers, we've got the medium growers and the short growers. Uh, like I earlier on highlighted at the beginning of uh, this presentation. Let us look at this variety by the name of Allison. Allison is a fresh market variety. It takes 100 to 120 days after emergence to mature. It is characterized by high yield. In terms of tuber shape, it's long oval to oval. It produces predominantly large and medium-sized chupas. This is really good news uh, to our uh, farming public because this is what we call the commercial grade. The more we have, the largest and mediums, then the better for us uh, at the market. Then as for the dry meter content, it stands at 12.1%. It has a good resistance to common scale. Then as for the attention points, we are simply referring to the advantages and disadvantages. It has the disadvantage of being a late bulker, meaning that as farmers, we should make sure that we push the number of growing days to the maximum possible, that is 120 days uh, or beyond. Let us have a look at our second variety by the name of Panamera. It is a fresh market variety. It takes 100 to 120 days after emergence to mature. It is characterized by very high yield. In terms of tuber shape, it's over. Then it produces predominantly large and medium sized tubers. It has the advantage of uh, being a broad adapter, which means it's quite uh, friendly to our resource poor uh, farmers who could not be having irrigation and hence can synchronize it with the rainy season. Then it has good common scab resistance. It has a very good late blight resistance. It's a big uh, advantage, uh, ladies and gentlemen, because late blight is really a headache when it comes to uh, meaningful potato production. And as for the advantages and disadvantages, it has very low nitrogen requirement, which means it saves you on your fertilizers. It can do well under a lower plant population, which means less seed you invest into your uh, farming program. Then as a form of a disadvantage, it's a late bulker, which means you have to make sure that it reaches 120 days of the growing season or beyond. Then uh, in terms of skin set, surely there is a disadvantage there, which means for us to manage that, we should make sure that we avoid what we call early pain off, because this variety enjoys natural senescence. Next slide, please. Okay, then our third and final uh, fresh market sector group a variety under long growers is a variety known as Fandango. It's a Fandango. Uh, most people always call it fa 
Fandago. Fa, I don't know really why they always uh, skip that end. It's Fandango. It is a fresh market variety. It takes 100 to 120 days after emergence to mature. It is characterized by very high yield in terms of shape. It's round over. Then there's what we call group size distribution. It is or it produces predominantly large M sized tubers. Then it's for our dry matter content, it stands at 19.5%. Then it is a good resistant to early and late blight. That's very important for us because uh, we invest a lot in terms of managing these uh, two diseases as regards our fungal applications. Then attention points, like what I told you, we are looking at advantages and disadvantages. It is an early bulker, which means uh, assuming uh, there is a disease during the course of uh, the growing season, a farmer is assured of uh, something because it bulks early. Then it has also the advantage of having a high percentage of first grades. Then, for us to manage greening, we should always make sure farmers that we do have a sufficient uh, soil cover. Next slide, please. Okay, let us have a look at the fresh market sector group under medium growers. Like what I explained earlier on farmers, as for medium growers, we are talking of the number of days after emergence, that is the growing season from 90 to 110 days. Let us look at our first variety, which falls under medium growers, known as Montiao. Uh, Montiao, ladies and gentlemen, is a trailblazer in terms of uh, yield. It has sustained uh, our company for years and is still popular to this day, despite that we had to register 12 more varieties after it. Uh, in terms of yield, it's characterized by very high yield. Chuba shape is long oval. Then it produces predominantly large and medium-sized tubers. As regards dry matter content, it stands at 19%. It has an advantage of having an even dry matter distribution. Then it has also a good common scape resistance. Then as in terms of shelf life, what we call storability, it has good storability. Then as for the attention points, that is the advantages and disadvantages. Yeah, it has a high percentage of second grades. Why? Yeah, it has a tendency uh, farmers to uh, produce what we call uh, or what you call second grades. By second grades, we are looking at such factors as uh, uh, deformations. Yeah, it's very susceptible to deformations, especially if our water supply it hasn't been consistent. So we ought to be very careful farmers with our water consistent consistency as well as our fertilizer uh, applications, the way we apply them, because it is sensitive to uh, nitrogen spikes which means it ends up being uh, uh, too big and at times its shelf life is compromised. It also experiences poor skin set under hot soil conditions. But as for the advantages, it is an early chubarizer and it matures uh, during short days as well. So, which means this is a good variety for our winter cropping. Remember, during winter, we experience short days, so it's a good variety for the winter season. Then it, it also performs well under a dry land. Then, as for those areas that are susceptible to air or frost, it recovers a lot earlier than uh, the majority of these varieties. Let us move on to our second variety under medium growers, that is Sebaba. Sebaba, not Sababa, but Sebaba. Okay, it is a fresh market variety. It takes 90 to 110 days after emergence to mature. It is characterized by very high yield. 
in terms of shape, it's long oval. It produces predominantly large and medium sized tubers. As for the dry matter, it's 20%, which means it has good dry matter content. As for our housewives, it is very suitable for, to make what are known as home fries. They are more or less similar to these French fries, but not as good as uh, French fries, such that at home, instead of going to the KFCs, uh, your good wives can always uh, uh, make uh, fries uh, for you. Okay, it has a good common and powdery scab resistance. Naturally, it is a very strong plant, which means by being a very strong uh, plant, we are talking in terms of uh, its high immunity. It resists quite a number of these uh, foliar diseases. Then as for the advantages and disadvantages, there's a fungal disease known as silver scaph. scaph. It's quite uh, sensitive. Then as for the advantage, it matures earlier than Montia. What does that mean to a farmer? You can always go into the market or enter the market much sooner before there is a glut. Next slide, please. Then our third and final a fresh, a fresh market sector group, a being a medium grower, is Electra. This is a fresh market variety. It takes 90 to 110 days after emergence. It is characterized by very high yield. In terms of tuber shape, it's around over. Then in what we call, uh, or what we refer to as group size distribution, it produces predominantly large and medium sized tubers. This is good news for the farming public because the more you have the larges and mediums, then the better as regards your pocket. Then for the dry matter content, it stands at 19.5%. It is a broad adaptation, which means it's a good variety for our resource poor uh, small scalars. It has good resistance uh, package uh, regarding uh, foliar diseases. Then as for our advantages and disadvantages, uh, it has characteristic pinkish eyes. Don't worry about uh, that color farmers because we've we received quite a number of calls from farmers thinking that perhaps uh, something uh, fish is happening to the variety. That's how it, it, it is characterized. It has got pinkish uh, eyes. Then as for uh, our disadvantages, you will notice that it discolors if left in the soil for too long a period of time. Next slide. Okay, then still under the fresh sector market group, uh, farmers, we do have what we call short growers. Remember, we spoke of long growers, we spoke of medium growers, now we are talking of short growers. Still under the fresh market sector group. Okay, let us uh, start off with Cifra. Cifra is a fresh market variety. It takes 80 to 100 days after emergence. It is characterized by very high yield. In terms of shape, it's round oval. It produces predominantly large and medium sized tubers. As for the dry beta content, it's 18.9%. Then as for our advantages and disadvantages, the plant is sensitive to stress related conditions, which means we should avoid as much stress to the plant as possible, be it uh, through uh, diseases or through compromised uh, water supply. And it is also sensitive to a soil borne pathogen by the name of Fusaria, which means farmers, I would advise you to grow cifra soon after uh, uh, removing or uh, tobacco from your uh, field. It is highly sensitive to potato leaf row virus. Very, very sensitive. I've experienced that myself in the field. So we should make sure that uh, we are far from tobacco fields because 
that's the main source of uh, viruses uh, being uh, affected or carried to the next crop by aphids. It has the advantage of experiencing an early skin set. It has a lower nitrogen requirement than Montiel, which means you save on your nitrogen fertilizers from us. It is characterized by early tuberization and bulking, which means if a disease is to set in sometime later uh, in the growing season, a farmer is assured of a harvest. And let us move on to Tyson. Yes, this is a baker variety. Why is it called a baker variety? It bakes very, very well. You know, with potatoes, we do have the cooking types, we do have the salad types, but this one is a baker variety because of its good uh, baking characteristics. The number of days it takes to mature is 80 to 100 days after emergence. It is characterized by a yield. And as in, term, uh, in terms of tuber shape, it's around half hour. It produces predominantly large and medium-sized tubers. A good, this is good news for us. Uh, then, as for our dry matter content, it stands at 20.9%. Then for our good women in the kitchen, it doesn't experience a discoloration after the cooking. And as for the advantages and disadvantages, yes, it is characterized by short domains, which means the share of life is not as, as good. So we should make sure that we lift it uh, whilst we are sure that we, we have a market to dispose, to dispose it, uh, I mean, as soon as uh, possible. Then it is characterized as an advantage by excellent uh, we are made by excellent performance under dry land conditions. Next slide. Then let us have a look at the French fries sector group. Ladies and gentlemen, we spoke of the fresh market uh, sector group. Then this one is the French fries sector group. This is the second out of the five sector uh, five a sec potato sector groups we spoke up, I, I earlier on spoke about. So let us have a look at this variety by the name of Innoveta. This is a French fry variety. It is a medium late variety. By medium late variety, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are just referring to the fact that it needs at least 110 days from emergence to to mature, so it's, under, it's in a 110 day and beyond a crop. Then it is characterized by good yield. In terms of tuber shape, it's long oval to oval. This is a very important characteristic, uh, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to French fries. They have to be long in terms of their length for the industry to accept it. The pleasing thing is that the genetics within the variety allows it to express itself in form of a long oval to oval shape. It produces predominantly large and medium-sized tubers. As for the dry matter content, it stands at 20.8. Percent. That's a very high level of dry matter content there. And as a result, that's the reason why it is suitable for quick service uh, restaurants. Mm -hmm. It has a consistent high frying quality as well. Those characteristics are strongly sought after by the uh, French fry market. As for the advantage and disadvantages, it is sensitive to bruising, that is mechanical damage. It is also a, an early bulkai, that's an advantage. It has a good tolerance to this disease by the name of potato leaf virus. Then as regards um, 
the specifications for the industry, it has to be a long offer, like what I explained earlier on uh, farmers. This variety needs to be long over for us to get chips that are long in terms of shape. Let us move on to our second French fry by the name of Alpha Stone Rasset. It also does for crisping, but uh, from our experience, we have uh, sampled it for culinary tests at uh, Cain's Foods. In the majority of cases, I am uh, sorry to say it has failed. So I've noticed that it does well under the French fry category, as opposed to the crisping uh, category. In terms of maturity, it is a medium late. It is characterized by good yield. Chuba shape is long oval to oval. It produces predominantly large and medium sized chubas. The rest for the dry matter content, take note, uh, farmers, is 21.3%, which is uh, which uh, is the reason why it is a favorite with uh, the French fry uh, market. Then it has consistent low sugars. It is also suitable for quick service restaurants because of its very crispy. As for shelf life, that is storability, it is suitable for long term storage. So as for our advantages and disadvantages, it is very sensitive to late blight. Then it also experiences late bulking, which means that we should make sure that this variety of farmers should enjoy its full growing season. Then as a disadvantage, we should make sure that there's sufficient cover, soil cover to prevent graining. The next slide, please. Let me move to our final sector group, which is the crisping sector group. Under this uh, sector group, farmers, we do have only one variety by the name of Taurus. This is a crisping variety. It takes 90 to 110 days after emergence. It is characterized by good yield. In terms of chupa shape, it's round to round oval. It produces predominantly medium sized chupas. This is, ladies and gentlemen, within its uh, genetics. As for the crisping industry, they don't favor large chupas. But the fortunate thing about this variety, it was bred to make sure that end of line, we get predominantly medium sized chupas. So as for the dry matter content, just have a look there, it's 23.3%, it's for a reason. The crisping industry is in favor of varieties that are characterized by high dry matter content. So it's one of the kind, this variety, because of its high dry matter content. We have the favor by the industry. It has a broad adaptation. It has good tolerance to dry circumstances. And in terms of storability or what we call shelf life, it is very good. Then as for the disadvantage, it's a late bulker, meaning that as farmers, we should make sure that our crop spray programs are good enough to make sure that uh, this variety witnesses its full growing cycle. Then the other advantage we have as regards this variety is its excellent round uniform shaped chubas for crisping. Because this characteristic farmers is highly favored by the crisping industry. Okay, let me have a one or two words about a, a crisping variety. 
You will notice that, ladies and gentlemen, this regards the crisping variety. You should make sure that you first secure a market. Because comparatively, in terms of yield, it's not as high as the fresh market varieties. I am looking at a case where, as a farmer, you grow it blindly without a, a contract. Then you deliver it to, for example, Keynes. They decline it for one or uh, two reasons. Then you decide to offload it to the open market where the fresh market varieties are. You will notice that you won't compete. So please make sure that you grow the crisping varieties under contract. Then as for your orders, ladies and gentlemen, we got a good lead by the name of Lizzie on 0779. 068779. You can always contact uh, for assistance. Or you can contact me, the agronomist. Of course, my name is uh, Abraham Makadzange, but you can always call me Abraham, no problem. 0773 264 Or you can visit us in person at number 48, Martin Drive, Masasa, Harare. And perhaps we can have a chat uh, over tea in terms of which varieties uh, suit your particular uh, environment. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Rolling. Well, thank you, Abraham. Uh, and as the saying goes, the creation of a thousand forests is in one acorn. The red seed truly makes all the difference. And thank you so much for such a wonderful uh, presentation. And to all farmers joining in, please note that our meeting is currently at full capacity and you can uh, ask your friends to visit our agribusiness media page. That is if they are trying to join in uh, this meeting. Uh, and uh, the name of the page again is agribusiness uh, media. Um, one of the key areas that we have to do right is crop protection. How best can we protect our crop? Rudo from Polakem, we are ready to learn from you. It's a good morning. Thank you very much for giving Polakem and me as well the opportunity to, to share the knowledge and experience um, that with our farmers, there is um, we, there's this saying which goes that together we achieve more. If you work as an individual, the results will be lower uh, than when you work as a team. So I'm so happy and grateful to to be part of this of this training. Uh, my name is Rudo Chinoy. I am uh, the technical advisor of Polakem, the or the technical person the, of Polakem Investment. Um, you can choose whatever tag you want to call me. And uh, a brief about Polakem. Well, let's can you go to the next slide? Yeah, the Polakem is, is a privately owned company uh, whose directors are Steve Fier and Stuart Jackson. Uh, 22 years in our service in the commercial farming sector. Uh, we have been uh, helping our large -co scale commercial farmers for the past 22 years. And um, we have started to reach out to the small scales um, in the form of our convenient tech sizes. Uh, our system is there, there's Martin, who's the leader, Mike, Ray, Sean, there's Asha and Kai Pan. All these guys are our system. I will share their contact details at the end of the day. Um, we also have a technical team, sound technical team led by Rudolf. And we have got a guy who has recently joined us who's called Taurai Machora. He is our regulatory person. We have got also exclusive partners, people who, uh, companies, yeah, our principal companies where we get our products from, UPL, 
the FMC Filagro. Mm, next slide. Sumitomo, a corporate biologicals, a cultiva, and real life PM. These are our major principal companies. We we did not, not to say there's anything bad about it. We we trust our, our partners because they give us good chemistry. And I'm sure farmers, you can testify to that. We, we are quite, we are not the cheapest in the market, but I I can vouch that we have the best quality around in Zimbabwe, in Zambia, in South Africa. Uh, I want to delve uh, into big issues. What are those big issues in, in the summer potato crop? I don't want to be cosmetic. I really want to go to the, to the crux of the matter. What are the issues? Weeds, so one of the important issue because weeds are, they take quite a, a large chunk of your yield if you do not control. So you need to do your proper weed management. These, um, the potato chupa mood. This is a, one of, um, of the past, which is of economic importance in, in, in potato production. Abraham, my colleague, he is my colleague. Um, actually, I was so happy when he actually, he, he was profiling his, uh, the long growers, the short growers, the middle growers. He actually mentioned about the vulnerability of the susceptibilities, the uh, susceptibilities um, of his, some of his varieties to the light. So I'm sure this is where we are coming in to close in the gap to help our farmers. We also have this season, please expect white flies. They are going to be a mass. They're going to be very much, they're going to be many white flies because of the weather. I'm beginning to see, uh, the, um, I'm beginning to receive reports right now. My table is inundated with um, uh, reports from across the country, uh, farmers complaining about white flies. But what is very important is, we, we, we delve deeper, we are detailed people. We want to know what speech is actually affecting the farmers. Of course, farmers, you can leave that to us, but um, I thought maybe it's worth sharing because there are two types of white flies, white flies that are, um, are affecting our potatoes or maybe be they tomatoes. But suffice to say that we, we just be on the watch out for, for white flies. I'm also going to be talking about the late blight. This is the major, major, major uh, issue. And I'm sure farmers have been uh, struggling, grappling with uh, this scourge. It's, it's caused a lot of losses. Yes, uh, early blight. Yeah, it's warm. We're gonna have some late blight, but I'm not gonna waste much of my time talking about that. We also have black scarf. This is like Zotonia salani. Uh, and of course, soft trots. Yeah, big time. We have actually been in Chegu to, um, I've been around, I've been younger, and I've seen quite a lot of soft roads. So after this session, I'm sure I should be able to, uh, to, to, to relate to these problems. Maybe you can actually, you can see where you, where you are as far as the, 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 big, the big issues are concerned. With metrobism, this is a product that you can actually use uh, as far as weeds are concerned. We have better Polacam investment. Uh, like I said, at Polacam, our uniqueness is, is in the branch. We have uh, our secret because if you look at the product, it is the active ingredient that kills. I think that's agreeable. But um, what kills more is, is the inert material which actually potentiates the active ingredient work. This is where the crux of the matter is. This is where the chemistry, all the chemistry is about the active ingredients, about the inert material. I want to give you an example. We have some of the products that are off patent because at Polakim we specialize with patented products and extremely good generic stuff. The issue, 
our concern is so much of the inert material. The purification of inert material is very expensive. So what then happens, some companies would want to take shortcuts because you know it's very expensive to purify inert material. That is to remove the impurities in there. So yeah, they found a niche where they purify in inert material to about 99%. And it is the net material that actually capacitate or potentiate the active ingredient work. This is the reason why when you spray a certain mipreed of A, then you spray R, maybe Alice, maybe from polar chem, you can actually see differences, very conspicuous differences. Right, metabolism, you, 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 you apply it as a pre major just after planting your potato. This is a no brainer, all of you know, but I just want you to, I want to highlight two items here. Like light, medium soils, you need less. Your quantities, the, 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 the amount of um, metribuism that you, you apply should it hinges on the, the amount of clay, the percentage of clay content in the soil. That should be noted. And you need to listen to that. You need to pay attention to that. Uh, from zero to 30, yes, you use 1.1 liter, yes. Then medium heavy soils, that is 31 to 50% of clay. You need about 1.5 because this is a pre-major heavy site. You need more because of that absorption in the chemistry chemi that you need, so you need more. In a, in, in, a, in a heavy in a heavy clay soil. And it, so you, you are coming with your metrics, right? Just th within three days of planning. The reason they say that is because our liquidity, when there's, uh, the potato germinates, you know, guys, with a contact, or work a, work a sprayer, maybe after 14 days, we a placement of immature bars, potato no will have to Buddha. And it, so what then happens now is there are chances the, uh, that there is going to be um, a, that nitric prison poisoning. I will show you a picture. I didn't uh, put it on my slide, but where there is a nitric prison, one of our big commercial guy who is actually growing hundred hectares of potatoes, Akaro and nitric prison poisoning. So there was a, you could see, yeah, we, we had a lot of stories. You know, some would say, you know, this is a, uh, Deficiency, nutritional deficiency, but when I had a close look at it, it took me time about a week to, to, to properly study and have a proper diagnosis. Then I discovered that was metabolism poisoning. Okay, so this is what it is, but it is very important. Please, not farmers. The, 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 the residual issue is very critical. Please, when you're considering this pre major medicine, you need to consider what is the follow up crop? What are the follow up crops? That is very important. Please, please, I, 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 you know, do not plant crops other than potatoes and sugar within six months of medicinal application. Okay, so in another crop, we, we do the crops such as maize, beetroot, turnips, maybe five, six months after, and you go, wow, you can take about 12 months for to grow plant in my horticultural crops. You can see, you need to, to, to really know what to, what you're going to plant, plan ahead, what you're going to plant next, what's going to follow up crop. Okay, next slide, next slide. We also have best, best, best baseline, we call baseline. This is a, 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 a habitat that actually specializes in my, my, my grass, my grass family, right? So this is much, this is much how much you need per hectare, but uh, please take note of the percentage clay content. Um, and of course, the respective, uh, the respective dosage, dosage rates per hectare. Uh, you, you can mix this to this baseline plus your metabolism. Well, metabolism it actually controls your broad leaves. Then your best baseline is coming in to help on your grasses. But uh, it suffice to note that the baseline has no restriction. So you can put it today, maybe if the crop fails or you, you get your harvest, you're lucky enough to get your harvest corn, you can still come in with any crop of your choice without any, any negative effects. Next slide. We, we also have Frontier Optima. This is, it covers your board, your, 
your, your, your, your grasses and broadleaf weeds. But um, you can see the issue of clay is very, playing a very important role. When a farmer, what I do when a farmer is, my farmers are here good as well. What can we use? I ask, what is the clay content of your soil? Test time my clay content. If you go to my lips, I can test the clay content of the farmers so that you'll be able to know in terms of application. We need to be very, because agriculture is science, it's not damn fact. You need to be very succinct. You need to be, you need to be on point when you are recommending my dosage rate. I know a lot of downtown, excuse me for want of a better term, a lot of downtown agronomy is happening around. You know, you go downtown, you know what we you get whatever you want, you get a flat rate, and that's it. You know, but we are worried as as I'm not, I don't want to sell a product for the sake of selling. Yes, my boss will come and give a perfect, you know, you know, give me a perfect back and say, look, hold on. But is it a sustained sell? Is that farmer going to come again? Maybe no. But suffice to know the withdrawing period there. I want to bring you to the withdrawing period of Orange Opma. I never restriction. I could I could have my description, description for for kind of change the frontier optima. Yeah, coming up anytime with with another crop. Okay, next slide. We also have Benetron. The, the, we are selling at a program, a very nice product. Product I know most of you. We also sell Basakran, which is a BSA product, but we've got our own Benetron, um, which is a little bit cheaper than compared to Basakran. Yeah, you need about three to five liters per hectare. And please follow up crop waiting periods. No restrictions at all. Please not that. But I just want you to be very, very, very um, careful there because at times what I've seen a few times, I don't wanna be some fight to, you know, there's some fight that happens because the varieties differ, you know, the sensitivity to herbicides. I don't see and some there's that transient fight in it potatoes at times, but it will recover. It doesn't have, according to research, it doesn't have any implications or negative implications um, on the yield. The reason why I put my, oh, these insects is because in any, what I do, my rule of thumb get for like them as far as the, this company is concerned is, we need to stick by the book. What's written on the label is exactly what we recommend. Anything coming from, from some sources, no, it's not legit. So we are confined to the label recommendations. So you, you have to put a disclaimer. If you're not recommending on the label, you need to say, yes, this is an off label. It's not that, yeah, that then we are safe. But we, we normally stick to our label recommendations. This is the reason why I actually uh, put these insights there. Next slide. Yeah, the, the other big issue, uh, as I mentioned, is the potato tuber model. This is a big problem, I'm uh, I've just been to check out. Yeah, we one of my family's family have 40 hectares of potatoes. Oh, because this is how it appears. I'm sure most of you know how it appears. Every serious potato farmer knows about this problem. So this is how it appears. In, these are the symptoms, you know. In agriculture, I've seen uh, people use signs, signs and symptoms. There's nothing like science in crop production. I just wanted to correct you there. There's nothing like signs and symptoms. It's only symptoms, not signs. Because signs you can't see. Okay, at least you've, you've learned something today. Next slide. This is what we have as far as uh, the protection the cropping against the tuber moth. Tuber moth, farmers are very, very, very excited about contact and all the systemic, you know, I want a systemic. But this is what we have. Let me see, let me say about what we have. We have got what you call rich gold bandex. This is an amazing product, an amazing product. It's, it's in the group three. Uh, I'm very concerned about the groups because it tells me the family, the family of that particular. The reason why it's about each the more resistance. Kuti, the more you don't need to repeat a group over and over again. There's a limitation in the, a cap to the number of applications that you are allowed to use. The chance of that tea is excited. This Vandex, I tell you, it's an amazing product. You need just 50 mils to kill your tuber moth. It's done. You can imagine, some people are going to 50 mils. I want to give you an example. I've got a friend of mine 
was called Miss Manasse. He had this problem here at Chippewa. I just bumped into his field, he called me there, I had a look, and I said, Oh, it's oh, Chippewa here. We use Vandex 50 mils. He said, Wow, 50 mils, isn't it, Daddy? And I'm telling you, uh, yes, you know, it's 50 mils. It's more, this product is very potent, it's very strong. Simba, very strong. And did you need just little to achieve big, big results? That like just as little as 50 mils per 500 liters. It's a contact. Please notice a contact um, insecticide which kills on contact. It has got a quick knockdown effect. This is what happens now. So um, it is very important uh, to know also, I'm very particular about the withdrawal periods. Yeah, yeah, my products. My withdrawal periods are not bad. When your farmer is at, you, you need to protect the goose that lays the golden egg. Okay. Uh, we can't be found, uh, you know what, EU has got the restriction, what they call the minimum residue limits. If a product doesn't comply with that given, according to the PPU list, then it's actually rejected. But if you look in Zimbabwe, guys, we are actually feeding poison to our clients. And this is the reason why we, no one has done it. This is not my demographics. My farmers, are we having a, an increase in the number of farmers? I don't think so. But I'm sure there are a lot of cancer issues that are coming in. I don't have research to support that, but I'm telling you, um, this is what it is. Yeah, I'm like, what about six minutes left? Yeah. So the withdrawal period is about three, three days. Okay, three days uh, after spraying, then you should you should, should eat your potatoes within three days of, of, of spraying. Next, we've got short. Short is another very important product from our side. Um, you need about 250 mils. It's a contact, uh, very good, strong. The difference is in group 22, 22, 22A. Um, a different group altogether. Uh, the, you don't need to shake it. Yeah, I mean, you just pour and mix mu, mu drama who you go. This is how beautiful this product is. Uh, watch this. The withdrawal period here, she was just seven days. It's an amazing product, guys. We are eco-friendly. This is one of our characters at Polacam. Next, we, we also have Corrigan. This is also in the group 20, it's in the group 28, a massive a potent chemical, which does your tuber month and also does the other things uh, that you're seeing on that, uh, on that slide. You need this as little as 150 mils to 200 mils per hectare to be able to, to kill your tuber month. Please note the, the group. We also have judge, Batonga, Batongi, judge, judge, can you just, Come back to judge. We also have judge. Judge, this is a very good um, a, 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 a pest, an in insect uh, growth regulator. It does, you know, in the treated chance of that, you know, the infection or the poison, you know, that passed on to the generation, to the other generation from egg to the mother. So it's a very potent product belongs to the group, group 15, it's a, a, a green uh, a label um, a, a product. So you just need this 800 mils per hectare. Next, we, we also have a new product, which has come, Polacem is very synonymous with new products. This is uh, Sumiplia, this is from, uh, from, from Japan. The group is alone, we don't find it anywhere in Africa, uh, let alone in Zimbabwe. You need just about 200 mils, a very potent chemical for Chubamon and Tuta Absoluta. It's new, we, we, we tried it so much, mind you, got to go, uh, just about last week. Next, this LED light, this is our PS. Okay, you can go to next slide. Right, yeah, we've got our flagship product, which is brilliant. The good thing about brilliant, you know, but a LED light, it's creative in nature. It goes up and down. And that's the only product led by control in Africa. In a, in, in, in no travel, there are two ways, both in Zylem and Floem. It's good. You need about 6.7 liters per hectare. You're good to go. It actually vanquishes your, your lead light. 
you need about six days withdrawal period. Next. Yeah, we've got uh, a Vito T, one of our flagship products as well. It does late and early blight as well. You know, this is what you have in terms of rates. I tell you, this is a lot. This is the product you can on the commercial pharmacy, the campaign product. You need two, two, two active and green, plus a strawberry, you need to have both. They are systemic and curative. You need 14 days withdrawal period. Just about, let's my minutes, mushroom. Just uh, next slide. I'll be done. Next slide. A Vito C. Yeah, Exitus is another one. It does very well. A uh, good one. It does flow. flow. It does early, late, blind, late, blind. These are the reds. Uh, and you need about three days to drop in the three days, but it's a curative product. It's contact both curative and contact with in a in a in a in a in a chlora in a chloral pattern inside. It's got flux of This is another next. We have another. I want to talk about um, Foxen. Foxen is another flagship product of ours, unique in nature. It has got two active ingredients. You need about two liters per hectare. It's curative in nature. Uh, we need about 14 days in withdrawal. You, before you have this show, your potato. Yeah, for tough, I want to talk about briefly about the past two minutes. Yeah, I tell you this, El Nino guys, it works. And you need products like an Afota for the, this is a past stimulant, it's got physics in a humic acid. You know, but it's an active nutrition in the system. It also helps to build your, your leaf structure. Uh, amazing, I eat umbo, just to show you how important this product is. If you mix it with your insecticide, oh my, not so you don't discourage farmers to mix it with any 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 insecticide or fertilizer. So you have to spray it on it. It's a loan product, but it's very effective. And both Mazor farmers who are using it in mass, it's just an amazing product. The the the, the last one, the next slide. Um, we also have I also want to talk about simple fossil. This is an amazing product, fantastic product. This is my last slide. I'll tell you, product is I need any silicon. And the silicon is not involved in the metabolism or plant, plant metabolism. What it does is it penetrates, gets in the plant, it forms a barrier in the leaf cuticle. It, then what then happens is uh, the, 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 the cells, the plant or the leaf cells will become very fragmented to such an extent that heat um, are uh, breaky and also my mom, my mom, my mom, this is like we are going to be stable because I need that physical area. Yeah, yeah, you know, but Rafuti, it was both in a silicon part. In my place, I got my mind, my office, I know, I know, I know, but what was any physical area in that it becomes very firm, the leaf becomes very firm and tight. And also, it helps in the uptake of calcium. I've just been analyzing is so remove farmer in Blawayo, one of my very, very popular big farmer in Blawayo. I'm going to need a lot of calcium move. I'm talking about 10,000. I'm sure at least we talk about 10,000 past per billion. Apart from the gypsum, all you need in new cells product like an ecosystem of my cell cutter, promote the active calcium inside. So, ecosystem is going to be a calcium move. You print the energy on crop. So, this is what we have. I'm sure for more information, I will um, share my contact details. You can contact us. Um, you come to Polacam, visit us at our higher office. Or you can visit our, our warehouse at 100 Lighting Road. Uh, we can have further chats, further discussion. We have time for you. Um, I want to thank you very much uh, for, for listening to me um, and hope to meet again. Great. Uh, thanks very much uh, for such a wonderful uh, presentation. And as Rachel Carson wrote, in nature, nothing exists alone. Your talk on crop protection reminds, reminds us farmers on the interconnectedness of all things in farming. Finally, let's welcome Elizabeth from uh, Nutrimaster. And Elizabeth, she will cover uh, the importance of soil health. Elizabeth, please. Wait. Um, thank you very much for this opportunity to talk uh, about you know, potato production. And um, big thumbs up to my um, colleagues uh, from Matapiri and Polakem for you know, giving an in-depth analysis and you know, giving the information that's really critical to be able to get the yields that we're really looking for when it comes to potato production. My name is Elizabeth and I'm an agronomist with Nutrimaster. So Nutrimaster, just to give a bit of a background, 
we are a fertilizer company that um, started operating in Zimbabwe around um, in 2020. So this is essentially our third year of food production. And in the three years that we've been in operation, we have successfully managed to, you know, produce high quality fertilizers and also um, to supply critical um, sectors in the uh, Zimbabwean economy. So commercial division and, and retail as well. So potato is actually at the heart uh, of, of the crops that we service because we this crop is, um, you know, it's got a potential, you, you get more than one season a year um, compared to other, other crops, you know, where you have maybe one um, crop in a year. But then with this one, you know, they, there's a potential to have one farm producing maybe up to three crops in a season. So that means uh, there's a lot that needs to go into actually producing it properly. And um, soil health uh, becomes very critical. I like that you said soil health and not just fertilizer because it's a whole host of things. It's a combination of what we actually try to encourage our farmers to do um, in terms of managing their crops. Um, so Nutrimaster produces uh, all fertilizers that you can think of. Um, outside the potato ones that I'm going to talk about today, we produce anything else um, that you might want, soyas. Um, we service uh, big contracting firms. We service retail outlets, the big retail brands that you know. We are available in there, the likes of Pro Pharma, Megasif, N. Richards, you name it. Um, we are in those that gain cash and carry you in those stores as well. So I'm going to just start talking. Uh, next slide, please. About the factors that affect uh, potato fertilizer application. I like that um, the first speaker, Mr. Makadang, is actually was very precise when he was talking about um, the varieties that are available from his um, company because the first um, important thing to note when you are wanting to embark on a potato production enterprise is to make sure um, that you understand the variety that you're going to go with because that is going to affect everything else. It's going to affect uh, what Trudeau gave us in terms of crop protection. And it's also going to affect how you're going to manage your fertilizers. Your target market is also critical. So I like when you were talking about the dry matter content. Um, you know, if you don't know what you're producing for, you will not know what fertilizers to select and how to apply them to be able to get to what the end market is looking for. So um, the first critical thing that we always talk about is uh, soil scientists as people in fertilizer is we talk about a soil test. I'm sure um, it's, uh, it's now beginning to sound like a broken record to some of you, but I hope in that that uh, people do realize that as, as agronomists, we push for that because it's really, really critical to be able to um, get the end uh, yield that you're looking for. So if you don't know your soil fertility, for a fertility level, I mean, you are really not doing yourself any favors. And for potatoes especially, They've got a very shallow root system and they are poor feeders uh, generally. So you need to manage the nutrition as you go. And they have a high demand of nutrients, especially the NPK. So that means if you don't know your fertility level, one, you might concentrate on a nutrient that is available and you oversupply and you cause um, chemistry issues in the soil because there are a lot of interactions in that soil film. And you find that if you apply the wrong nutrient, Nutrient, instead of it giving you a benefit, it may actually become a disadvantage. So it's important for you to get your soil tested and check the fertility level before you even think of potato production. The next thing is variety, which I've already mentioned. And then there's the target yield. So if I want to produce a potato crop that is going to give me 30 tons per hectare, the amount of fertilizer that I have to put in is different from a person wanting to achieve 60 tons, for instance. I mean, all of us will target for the higher end of the market, but it, it also has to be uh, married with the variety because it doesn't uh, help us to get the low yielding variety and then you put all the fertilizers in the world and you do everything else right. But if the variety is not bred to give you the yield you're looking for, then that is a lost cause. So it's really important for you 
to know the variety that you're going for. And then there the are a number of factors, but I'm just going to list the most important. The soil type is also equally important, especially in the rainy season. And this so uh, more so for um, sandy soil. So you find that if you're growing a potato in sandy soil, you find that if there's a lot of rain, during the growth season, you might have a lot of leaching of nutrients. And if there are any other issues in that soil, you might end up having to apply more than what you'd normally apply in the drier months. And if, especially if it's a sandy soil. So the type of soil will also determine how much nutrients you put. If it's a clay soil, you, you know, it holds more nutrients better. There are other products that are available um, through us as well. We have partnered with other, other suppliers of, of critical um, agricultural products, which we feel will help our products become more efficient. I'm just going to highlight one, um, a product called Tricotech. Um, it also, it comes in uh, from a company called Dudutech and we're one of these uh, distributors. And so if you apply that at planting, it helps you with establishing a good root mass and it helps you with uh, nutrient use efficiency. That is to actually keep to the nutrients as you apply them and get them into the uh, plant. And uh, also it just helps with your general um, soil health. So that is the soil health component. Um, com you know, putting together um, natural and, and the, the fertilizers that we apply to be able to get our soil to where it's supposed to be. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so I'm just going to highlight the role of major nutrients here. Um, it's important as a farmer for you to know why you're applying the nutrients. That helps you even when your agronomist is explaining to you your report, you know that, you know, this nutrient, I am I am short of this, so I need to manage it this way. It helps you even with everyone else, even on the farm, even if they may not be technical, they might not be the manager, but at least if they know the basics, they know that you know, our cells are phosphorus deficient or they've got high calcium, like Rudo was saying earlier, there's no need to chuck gypsum, a lot of gypsum into that soil. But I've realized with a lot of our farmers, everyone who, of, who just put gypsum in the soil without even knowing their, their um, uh, you know, their calcium reading. And they, they won't even um, uh, check that and, 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 you know, adjust accordingly. So at times it's important, especially if you've got clay coil, uh, soils with a high calcium level. Um, I mean, that is a cause for concern if you are going to apply calcium instead of actually getting a benefit, you might end up not doing yourself any favors. So nitrogen, um, is really important, you know, it's the greening element. I think we all know it. It helps us just at early establishment, but you just have to make sure that you do not apply too much nitrogen. If you apply too much nitrogen as well, and um, I mean, the dry matter contact that Mr. Makazande was talking about earlier will be affected. So you might have a lower um, dry matter content and this might be a problem where you are going for the processing types that require a dry matter content. And then we go to phosphorus. I mean, this has been also said, it's an establishment nutrient. So it helps with your root establishment. And in this case, where the root, where, you know, in the potato, that's where we set our tubers early on. So it, influ it influences the tuber numbers. So already you are setting your yield as you're starting. So if your phosphorus is not at par or it's not where it's supposed to be, you find that you are already, um, you have a disadvantage already. Then we talk of potassium. I like to call it the quality nutrient because with potassium, it just helps you get there in terms of yields with any crop. And in, with potatoes in particular, it's a tuber establishment, it's bulking. It also helps to tolerate stresses, especially where, you know, if you're doing a dryland crop and your irrigation is failing and all that, I'm not saying you have to do it that way because your potato needs its water. But I'm saying if you've got sufficient potassium fertilizers and you've done you've managed your uh, potassium correctly you will find that your crop will be more tolerant to stresses and um, then sulfur comes in uh, as amino acid and protein production um, you'll find that this is actually really critical because it's part of the growing system uh, growing um, uh, 
growth stages, uh, through the growth stages, you want to make sure that you, you have sufficient protein and amino acids to be able to get to the yield you're looking for. And one of the critical factors when it comes to potato is the skin. So calcium helps us to get the skin right. So calcium is involved in cell wall building. And so that means that it will help um, with the crop getting a good skin um, at the end of the growing season. And that helps with reduced bruising and keeping quality and marketability of the end product. Then magnesium is actually part of the chlorophyll. And so it helps with chlorophyll synthesis. Um, then we talk of zinc. Zinc is, is really a very, it's a micronutrient, but you need Needed to get the starch content. It also helps with um, many um, enzymatic, uh, enzymatic um, reactions in the in the plant, cell division and elongation. And then now we talk of burn, uh, carbohydrate transfer to tubers. We want to save tubers, so we need the, the, the carbohydrates to go to the tubers so that we actually have the big, mediums and larges that we're looking for, uh, that Mr. Bakazange was talking about earlier. So that's just in a nutshell, the major role of the nutrients that you're getting when you're getting new to master fertilizers. Next slide, please. Now I'm just going to run through the fertilizers that are available from NutriMaster. So once you've got your soil test report, we then look at the at the uh, at what is happening in your soil. So we look at um, you know the first thing. I mean, I know a lot of people will know pH, so they will check their pH. But it is critical for for us to um, in read to actually say this that you can't lime just before applying uh, just before planting your potato. I'm sure you've heard that because you have potato cap. So um, lining just before planting is not advisable. And potatoes also prefer a slightly acid soil. So around the pH of 5.5 to 6, 5.5 is ideal for potatoes. So we've got a number of potato fertilizers available at NutriMaster. I'll start talking about, and all of them um, deliver NPK, sulfur, boron, and zinc. So that means when you're starting, you've applied at least six nutrients right at planting. And we tried, we have formulated them in a way that when you plant, um, you know, you have got sufficient nutrients to get you through the first stage of growth and, you know, getting you on the way to that bamba harvest you're looking for. So the potato fertilizer I'll talk about is our potato NPK 61824. This is a very popular potato uh, blend that we also sell. Um, this is particularly important with guys with high phosphate levels, and but they want a lot of potassium in the soil. So if your soil has got high, high phosphate, um, but you need... Um, you need a lot of uh, potash. Uh, you know, they come in with this and, and nitrogen, though nitrogen is really based on the target yield. So when we are applying nitrogen, we are targeting uh, between, depending on the variety, between 120, I mean, it depends at uh, also the climatic conditions up to 200, even just over 200 um, nutrients of nitrogen. Um, and so if your soil has got a lot of maybe organic matter and there's a lot of things happening there in terms of nitrogen, though nitrogen is very mobile in the soil. So we don't really regard it in isolation, the soil test report. There's a number of things that we have to look at to be able to confidently say we are going to rely on the nitrogen reading. So so we, we are saying now with the 6% nitrogen, if your soil for some reason has got a lot of nitrogen and you're trying to keep the nitrogen in check, this becomes an ideal fertilizer because it only contains 6%. And we go to the second one, you'll find that it says tobacco blend on there because this fertilizer is used mainly in tobacco. So what I will emphasize now is the sources of raw material because with potatoes you can't use a myriad of potash which is potassium chloride because it's got a lot of chlorine so what we do is when we blend these fertilizers we ensure that they are blended using sulfate of potash and that is the reason why you find that that is a tobacco blend because the same reason same logic applies to tobacco farming. This probably is by far the most popular with our commercial divisions. And um, they like using 
a knockdown version of this, which is a 92420 or this 102420 um, to get their uh, potato crops going. And these are guys that we're talking about who yield between 60 to 70 tons uh, per hectare. So they are targeting high yields. And so for them, it's important to get <coughs> to get that nitrogen in at the beginning and to, to, to then manage it from there. So this is a very popular variety, oh, sorry, um, fertilizer. And then you'll find that this is also available in our re retail uh, outlets. So in terms of uh, our partners, um, Pro Pharma has got a potato combo that we're supporting them with. And in that combo, there is this fertilizer because we know and we're very confident of the results that one can get using this fertilizer. Next slide, please. Then when we talk of the other, sorry, yes, thank you. So Blend C has been very popular for time immemorial. And um, in my more than a decade of practice as an agronomist, I've realized that this is always going to be the best of reference. So I included this because I know there are farmers who are going to use this fertilizer and it's okay to use it, but just to emphasize that it's not the most economic way of applying a fertilizer because as you see, the NPK is 5, 15, 12. Now, potato particularly requires a lot of potassium. I mean, of the three NPK, of the three macronutrients and primary macronutrients, the NPK, potatoes um, require potassium in the highest percentage. So you will see on that it's 12% when you need a lot of it. So then that means for you to be able to get to the um, required units, you need to apply a lot of the fertilizer. Um, so then it's not very economic. So I'm putting it there uh, and you'll find that, you know, guys who use this probably will be um, targeting a lower yield, maybe around 30, 35 tons, because for you to be able to meet the nutrient requirement with the fertilizer will be very difficult. And then we go to 6, 20, 23. This is of particular interest if a farmer has got low phosphate levels. So if they're trying to get their phosphate going, they then um, use this 62823 because it's got a high phosphate, a low nitrogen, but it still has a high enough potassium to be able to get to that high potassium reading at the end. So when we are talking of potassium, we are saying a crop can utilize anything between five to eight kgs to achieve a ton of yield. So in essence, by the end of the growing season, you will have in excess of 400 kgs of potash that you have to apply in, um, in a potato crop to be able to get the high yields that is in excess of 50 tons. But with, with phosphate, we normally apply everything at planting. And with phosphate, the, 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 there is a cap. So when you come, when you fertilize for a 50 ton crop, um, normally you require maybe up to 250 units of phosphate. And at that, uh, at that juncture, even if you apply more phosphate, um, you really don't get a yield increase after that. So our target is to get to that 50 ton. And then after that, even if you're targeting a 70 ton crop, chances are you don't really have to adjust your phosphate to meet that extra gap because at that, the crop is at its maximum for phosphate requirement. What will drive your yield are the other nutrients. So you have to make sure your potassium is right, your nitrogen is right, your trace elements are right, which brings me to the next slide. Next slide, please. So now I'm going to talk about the foliar fertilizers that are available from NutriMaster. We've got a three phase um, foliar range, which is specifically formulated to ensure that crops get especially trace elements and some um, hormones to be able to get it going. So what happens is we've got what we call a nutrient starter and your guess um, is probably the right one if you're guessing we're using it at the start of the growing season because this is where the crop is, you know, is supposed to, um, to start um, producing roots and you know getting that shoot, uh, that root mass going so that we have sufficient roots to take nutrients up and so this is when we use nutri data. I will explain the chemistry a bit behind this three phase approach. So this is a chelated product. It's a liquid fertilizer. It's a two micron and so that means it's highly um, the uptake on the leaf is highly efficient and to add on to that 
This product contains amino acids, which if you remember from my previous comment, I indicated that it's very critical for you to have amino acids because they're the building blocks for your proteins. And then that's where you start putting your yield for you to get that high yield. So this three phase is a special technology, very uh, a liquid, very easy to mix. And we, we, we recommend this at a 2% solution. So that is... Um, two liters in 200 liters of water across the range. And that will give you a nice um, uh, a nice dash of trace elements. You know, trace elements are like spices for those who like cooking. You know, you, you don't really, you know, you don't really uh, have them in high quantities, but they really do make the food taste nice. And at the end of the day, unlike in food, in farming, if you actually don't put um, the trace elements, it's not about tasting good, but you actually lose the food. So we need the traces to actually get to the yield that we're looking for. I'll just also emphasize that this three-phase approach has got um, cytokines and auxins as well. And you'll find that um, at the very beginning of the, the growth season, um, auxins will, uh, will push for apical dominance and also, and then uh, cytokines will, will push for dry matter and they'll push for senescence later on. So it depends on what growth stage you are at to be able to, to, to get the benefit of those hormones. But ideally, Nutristart would help. The balance in the, in the bottle helps you to get the yield that you're looking for at the end. So this three-phase approach is a no-brainer, ladies and gentlemen. If you are going to fill in the gaps that are left by the vessels that we've spoken about, and the top dressing that I'm just going to highlight in the next couple of minutes, we are going to, uh, you need those three to be able to get there. Next slide, please. So I'm going to talk about top dressing now. Uh, next slide, I'm almost done. Uh, so we've got, you know, we've got a myriad of products, but I'm just going to focus on a few. So we've got what we call new, our Nutri Master Super Top, which is an SOP blend. So SOP, particularly if you're looking for dry matter accumulation, and dry matter accumulation is for those, uh, varieties that are for processing when you need more than 20% dry matter content. Um, that's where you, you go with, you know, if you're using a SOP or an SOP blend, you know, it helps with dry matter accumulation. You want to ensure that uh, this comes in, you know, around three weeks, uh, depending on how your, your, your basal uh, program is, um, around three weeks after emergence, and you're applying this at around 300, 200, 300 kgs per hectare, some will come with this at the beginning. It gives you a dash of nitrogen, so your crop will get that greening effect. It gives you a dash of potassium, so that potassium will help because just after that, you then go to your crop starts going to by, uh, to by initiation. And so you want to ensure that that potassium is there as you go. Then there is the very um, high, it's, it's, a, it's a priced, it's a highly priced product but the advantage is that it's chlorine free. So the reason why potassium chloride as opposed to sulfate of potash or SOP is, is, is not used in potatoes is because of that dry metal accumulation and because the chloride side of it um, affects the dry metal accumulation. But with potassium nitrate, it's, uh, it's uh, chloride free. It's got 18% nitrogen. It gives you high potassium. So is a, a very good option as a top dressing because like I said, if we're going to look at four or 500 units of potash to get to our target yield, the high yield as that is, we want to ensure that we're getting the potassium from the right source. So it can be an SOP source or it can be a potassium nitrate source. So those two would be your options um, going uh, into the season. Next slide, please. This would probably be, this will be my last slide on top dressings. Um, I've already spoken about SOP. Now, the other advantage of using SOP is that on top of getting your potassium, you're also getting sulfur. So it's got about 17% sulfur in there and 50% of uh, potash. So in this particular top dressing fertilizer, you have, this is a granular, 
if you want to apply it and you want it to be available as the season goes, or if you want to apply it as a soluble, um, we've got a crystalline version of this or a technical grade, which is highly sol soluble and can be applied through drip irrigation or through the pivot or, you know, so that to be able to get the yield that you're looking for. Then we talk of the calcium nitrate. We've already emphasized that it's important to get calcium. So this fertilizer, normally what happens is guys will come in at three weeks and apply either a combination of or, or a choice of SOP, potassium nitrate, super top, depending on what the farmer, farmer is, you know, operations in terms of what they've got available, in terms of what they're used to, in terms of what the soils are like, you know, varieties, et cetera, et cetera. But as the, after the three weeks, um, at around six weeks, they come in with a second application of top dressing uh, between five and six weeks. And by that time, they come in with a high potassium as well to help with that bulking and, and, and making sure that the crop, you know, says those uh, tubers that we're going all going to be proud of and after that uh if you if you then uh, go then after that you normally then come in a week or so later with calcium nitrate to help it with that skin um to make sure that the skin is you know is at its prime in terms of the the to 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 get a good quality skin and you know reduce bruising because so that's a major factor in terms of how the crop will keep after harvesting so this calcium nitrate really becomes important and i think i can also emphasize the importance of gypsum in this uh, because we then can apply gypsum at planting and give and take 500 kgs per hectare will do uh, but uh that will have to be after a soil test report has confirmed you actually need to put that uh, to be able to get uh, your, your calcium going. So it's a matter of how you as a farmer select um, the various products I've spoken about and come up with a pro program that actually gives you the yield that you're looking for. Next slide, please. I think uh, in a nutshell, there is, um, that is what we, we, we emphasize when we talk of um, potato fertilizer application. The critical things to remember from this presentation, know your soil test. If you are going to do potato production, there is no harm in doing a soil test. It's really important. And then choose your fertilizers wisely. Remember to choose the right variety for the market. Remember to fertilize for the variety that you've got. And remember to get new fertilizers from a reliable source like Nutrimaster and your varieties from reliable sources as well as your chemicals. But that's it for me. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much there, uh, Elizabeth, for such a wonderful uh, presentation. It is said that we know more about the movement of celestial bodies than about the soil underfoot. So your insights have certainly helped us potato farmers understand our soil better. So farmers, Matapiri, Polakem, and Nutrimaster are your partners for a successful potato production business. Now let's move to our question and answer session and our chat is now open. If you have any question or comment, please do send via the chat here on Zoom or you can comment if you're watching us live on the Agribusiness Media Facebook page. And uh, the first question here it comes from uh, Tawanda. It says, how does seed selection, particularly those res uh, resistant to local pests and diseases impact the overall yield? I think Abraham, if you can get that one. Okay, the question, I will take the question again. It says, it says, how does seed selection, particularly those resistant to local pests and diseases, impact the overall yield? Okay, uh, a good question from our farmer. It means uh, if we are to select our variety well, especially in terms of uh, pest and disease tolerance, it means we are going to apply less in terms of our chemicals. Then if we save on our chemicals, the better. It means we increase our uh, profit margins. All right, uh, thanks for uh, that one. Then this uh, question is uh, for Elizabeth. It says, uh, Elizabeth, you say you mentioned tobacco blend, so I joined late. Uh, did you say we can use that in potato uh, farming? 
Yes, precisely. So the way it's, um, the way the fertilizers are formulated is similar. Um, like tobacco has got chloride restrictions. So this is by regulation. We can't go above certain percentages. So we need to formulate it with an SOP blend. And so that's the same notion that applies to potato fertilizers. So yes, um, you can use tobacco fertilizers for potatoes. All right, uh, thank you. Then uh, Rudo, John here says, what are the common mistakes that we have to avoid as potato farmers when it comes to crop protection? I know there are plenty, maybe if you can uh, highlight one or two. Uh, thank you very much, Rolly, for that question. Uh, a thought provoking question, indeed. Uh, what you can not avoid as a potato farmer is not to scout your land, not to scout for, for pests and diseases. So it is my advice, sincere advice to farmers to say, you need to have a, to scout your land for disease and pests. Just set aside a day per week where you can actually go in your field and actually yeah, do the scouting. And if you don't know, please try to seek for proper ID because we have seen a lot of farmers uh, getting it wrong on, on the prescription, on the identity, then the prescription will also go wrong as well. Thank you. All right, uh, thanks so much. And then uh, whilst you're still there, the farmer is asking for your contact details. Uh, I am, uh, you can contact me on 0774-233-212. Uh, uh, That's my call number. 0774-233-212. The then my WhatsApp number is 073-62-57-342. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Rudo. Then uh, this one is for Elizabeth, for Elizabeth. This farmer says, I'm planning to do potatoes in Bindura. Uh, do you have a branch where I can get uh, nutrient master fertilizers? Yes, yeah, so in Bindura, I think we've got we've got a pro farmer in B, in Bindura to have a mega save, and I think um, and and Richard. So they should just look for for a an, a, a reputable retailer, and they will be able to get um, our fertilizers from there. So a pro farmer um, make. I'm not sure if. I don't think it's in Mega Save is in Bindura, but I know there's a Mega Save in Glendale, um, and also in uh, uh, Gain Cash and Carry. So you can check in those stores, you know, and you'll be able to get our products. All right, uh, thank you. This one is from Atapiri. This farmer says I was planning to reuse uh, seed from my uh, last yield. Uh, and following the presentation by Matapiri, I'm reconsidering purchasing uh, seed. Uh, what are the disadvantages, if you can come again there, uh, Mr. Makadzange, on uh, retaining seed? Okay, am I audible enough? Sure, loud and clear. Okay, uh, we don't usually encourage our farmers to retain seed, why? Uh, the production of seed is a very, very uh, specialized enterprise. There is, or there are what are known as viruses. An ordinary farmer can't pick out those from his crop. So he or she will end up uh, taking uh, tubers from such plants, then come the next season, the seed won't be able to perform to standard. So we always urge our farmers from season to season to come buy seed from us. Considering uh, the degree of harvest a farmer will realize 
it's always, always worthwhile for a farmer to take new seed for each season. Because as long as a farmer is getting something out of uh, uh, the seed, he or she would have uh, taken from us, it's a worthwhile exercise the next season for the farmer to come and buy seed once again from us. I appreciate that as farmers, we might think that it's cheaper to retain seed, but if the retained seed can't give you yields, then it will be wasted uh, effort as well as money. So let me repeat by saying that please farmers, come to us, buy seed for each and every season, and you won't be disappointed. Thank you. Right, thank you so much for the insight. And whilst you are still there, if you can share your contact, please. My contacts? Sure. Please. Hello? Yes, sure. Yes. Uh, Matapiri contacts. Okay. Uh, we have a good sales lady by the name of Elizabeth. Her number is 0779 069779. Or they can contact me as the agronomist, but in the majority of cases, I might be out there in the field and we might miss each other in the process. So that's why I always urge our potential clients to contact Elizabeth, who is always in the office. But as for my number, it's 0773. Two six four one four zero, and my name is Abraham. I am comfortable with being called Mutumene Abraham. That would suffice. Well, thanks, Mutumene Abraham, for that one. Then, uh, Elizabeth, if you can share your contacts, please. Once more, please. So Okay, so um, you can get in touch with us on our WhatsApp number, which is 0775-439-751. You can also like our Facebook page, which is Nutrimaster Zim, and you get um, updates as to what we are up to, if we've got specials, or if we've got anything else that might be of interest to you, you can, you know, you can just be up to date. And then you can always call me as well, um, 0772-528-034. Um, yeah, that's, those are our contact details. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, farmers. And as we wrap up, we extend our heartfelt thanks to our presenters and sponsors, Abraham Makadzange, Mudumeni Abraham Makadzange from Matapiri Seed, and Elizabeth, she was representing Nutrimasa, and Rudo from Polakem. Uh, we thank them for their invaluable insights for making this event a success. But before we close, may I ask the presenters for some parting shots in um, under 30 seconds, please? Uh, we start off with uh, Abraham. Any parting shots to our farmers? Sure, thank you. Uh, at Matapiri, we have a belief that has been sustained over time, which says good seed is does not cost but pays so i'm urging our farmers to avoid buying seed from unauthorized outlets as seed is only supplied by seed houses thank you so much all right uh thank you then uh elizabeth any parting thoughts I will take a leave from what Abraham just said. Um, I will use our pay off line as well. So at YouTube Master, we say you're supposed to grow like a pro. That's our pay off line. And what I urge uh, our listeners today to do is to ensure that when they embark on any farming enterprise, Hi, Elizabeth. All right, network challenge there. Uh, Rudo, any parting shots? Yeah. yeah, thank you very much, uh, Rolly. Um, 
my parting shot is, um, you know, is the word team that uh, it's an ab abbreviation for together, everyone achieves more. So let's work together, uh, farmers and agronomists, please get information from reliable uh, companies like, uh, like Podcam. Uh, yeah, and uh, farm good, uh, we sell quality stuff. Thank you. All right, thanks, uh, Rudo. And uh, we also thank all farmers for your active uh, participation. And of course, the agribusiness media team for making this event a success. Remember, the ultimate goal of farming is not the growing of crops, but the motivation and perfection of human beings, as Masanobu Fukuoka said. Let's continue to grow and perfect together in the field of agribusiness. Thank you, farmers, and have a great day. Thank you.